on a brand new Josh Nason's Punch Out. It is WrestleMania week, not just for WWE, but of course for all those indie promotions that are running, which include GCW, which includes Bloodsport, which includes my guest this week, Josh Barnett. Josh returns for the first time since around what 2019. He and I talked right before the very first Bloodsport that he put his name on. So he's back. We talk about all kinds of things, including Thursday's Bloodsport X, which you can see on Triller TV, Bloodsport Bushido, which is coming up this June in Tokyo, Japan, his AEW debut, how that came together, his bourbon line, yes, a bourbon line, beer, shower burgers, roadhouse, we talk about everything and then some. So let's get right to it. Yours truly, Josh Barnett, two 46-year-old guys, both named Josh, both at the apex of their careers. One, a former UFC heavyweight champion. One, not. I'll let you guess which one. Talking all about blood sport, more blood sport, bourbon, beer, Baszler, everything else would be. Let's go. I am beyond excited to welcome back a frequent guest on this website and a guest of mine for the third time. He's a former UFC heavyweight champion, multi-time Brazilian jiu-jitsu champion, a catch wrestling champion, and a pro wrestler as well. This Thursday, April 4th, he's bringing Bloodsport 10, the sold-out Penn's Landing, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as part of the annual GCW Collective, and then Bloodsport Bushido, this June in Tokyo, Japan, for the very first time. I welcome wrestler, fighter, actor, stuntman, and bourbon and beer connoisseur Josh Barnett to Josh Nason's Punch Out. Josh, you are a busy guy. I'm going to guess that's how you like it. Well, it's the way it is. Uh, one one head, a lot of hats. Wow. So, um, I, I guess it's my own fault for having interest and passion in so many different things. Uh, but uh, every time I, I think about how crazy the uh, things get with, with so many projects and things to be managed i just always go well but it's all for a good thing it's not because um you know of all the other horrible irritating awful reasons that your time can be taken up in fact it's uh your, your time is being taken up because uh you're choosing to go out there and try and build stuff and that's just what it takes yeah and it speaks also to uh i think your character and probably a lot of the friendships you've made and alliances you made along the way that people are they seek you out or they find opportunities and, and uh, they look at you and they trust you for these different things that you come in contact with. So seems that you've done something right over your 46 years, huh? Uh, I, I think so. And so far so good, but I, um, I don't think I can really, uh, you shouldn't expect those sort of things. You yeah. should just appreciate them when, when they do work out your way. Exactly. So Bloodsport 10. Um, so you and I, I was going back in our archives, you and I talked right before your very first one of these. So this was what about five years ago. So this is going to be the 10th event in what, just about five years. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's quite something. You know, we talked then, do you think this is going to have, you know, 10 of these going forward uh, a couple of year and being as uh, successful and uh, unique as it is? I, I don't know if we would have said that, you know, there would have been 10 of these going up. I think probably just the first one, see how it goes, but it's a, uh, I, you know, I was listening to a different interview that you did. It's, uh, I think it's really a credit to how different this is in this game of, of pro wrestling that um, there's so much that is alike and blood sport is so unique. And those that have seen it know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's a credit to, I think your vision and uh, you know, the people that are participating as well, they're able to execute that and all the people you had involved. It's a really unique thing that, it is justified having 10 events and probably, I don't know, 10, 20, 30 more. Who knows? Well, that's the goal is to take it as far as I can and to do with it what is possible. Um, it's not obviously easy to know where those boundary lines are going to be and which ones you can smash over and at what time you can do that because uh, the timing for these things is, is everything, really. Um, there's so many examples of movies that we call cult classics because in their time they were not well received, but then over time they've become uh, loved, adored, and a popularity and a fan base is built up to support them to do things like create a sequel to Blade Runner, which at the time was seen as a, a bit a bit of a bomb. 
uh, in terms of how much it costs and how much production went into it versus what it was able to to gather from the audience at the time. But the movie was as a, it was the movie was made in the right time for it, but it was at the wrong time to be received, in a sense. And that's yeah. a strange place to be, but that's just with something as big and with as much money behind it as as a movie. With pro wrestling, sometimes uh, sometimes the, the nuances can be even just even more delicate. And I've heard people talk about how this show or that show or this other show that is basically just trying to ape us or a match where they see that you know this get draws interest and money. So oh, I'm going to do one of these on our show and we'll call it something else. It's like I I don't get upset about it because you know it shows that people think that there's success to be had there they wouldn't do it if they didn't think it was going to make them money if they didn't think it was going to get them some sort of uh interest from from people watching and 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 give them some way to stand out but uh you sit back and you're like but they're not blood sport they don't have me they don't have the same resources they don't have the same oversight it's just it's not going to be the same show so eventually you got to, if you like what you see, or if you thought this is pretty, you got to come to us to get the straight dope. Otherwise everything else is just, it's been cut down way too many times to give yeah. you the same effect. And uh, I, I'm very fortunate that it could be that way because there's a lot of wrestling in the world right now. And, you know, some folks can get behind particular athletes and follow them wherever they go. Some folks get really dedicated to a particular promotion or style and sometimes that means people get into their little bubbles and they don't leave them most blood sport i feel like we have an opportunity to reach a broader fan base uh, not not that i want to necessarily water down what it is we do because i have no intention of ever doing that um, but i want to try and you know whatever whatever i do of course i want it to be successful but i also want it to make a, a meaningful impact on on what the businesses we're working in and in this case it's pro wrestling. Yeah. So as of right now, uh, there's eight matches on this show. And of course, much mm -hmm. of the, the focus has been on Shayna Baszler's participation. We'll talk about that in a minute. But the one that definitely caught my eye was Nick Nemeth against uh, Mike Bailey. Um, Bailey's third time going into blood sport. This is Nemeth's first time. Uh, and of course, you know, some people that may not be familiar with his background may think, oh, Nick Nemeth is kind of a, a strange inclusion. But he's got, you know, decorated amateur wrestler at Kent State. Um and, you know, obviously he is a very buzzworthy wrestler right now, given that he's out of WWE and doing all these indies, he's doing New Japan, TNA and, and the like. Was the was the uh, the amateur wrestling, was that kind of a driver for his inclusion, wanting to keep him it, getting him in this event? Um, or, is it, or is it kind of like no matter what we want to try to get him in here? No, it was the amateur wrestling, but it was also the fact of way back when watching him wrestle punk. And just a regular match on Raw many years ago. And seeing those two decide, yeah, we're just not going to do a standard WWE match. We're just going to go out there and wrestle. Mm -hmm. And watching that, in addition to seeing his one Raw underground match, mm -hmm. and I'm like, yeah, of course, I knew this dude would have the capability of pulling this off. Uh, not a problem. So when he became a free agent, um, you know, Brett and I were like, well, let's let's try and uh, make this a, a reality we, we think it would be obviously great for our show but I, I think it'll be great for him and whatever it is that we do with blood sport it's um a, a, a real goal of mine with this show is to make it wrestler focused and the kind of place that whether you want of you whether you win or you lose you leave with a higher stock after being in our show than from coming than beforehand mm -hmm. that everybody's that people will see you in a, in a much greater and improved light from doing blood sport and have a, a stronger impression and more interest in you. Um, this is not a show to run simply for the sake of itself. It's not a show to be uh, a middle finger to the rest of the pro wrestling uh, promotions in any way. Um, it's not a show to, to be out there trying to be an adversary as it's raison d'etre. It, I, I know what we're, we're doing is not being done anywhere else. And that's not because everyone sucks and we're cool. 
although we are cool. <laughs> uh, it's it's that the people that are capable of making that kind of a show, uh, th this kind of a show, just don't really exist. They're just not really around anymore. And that's not necessarily anybody's fault. I'm not going to sit here and point fingers or complain. I'm, I'm just going to go out there and make it. And because I have the, the ability to do so, I'm going to. And with that, I, as a wrestler myself, want to see something that makes those wrestlers proud, um, excited, happy to do it, to be a part of it, and feel like they're getting more out of it by doing it than by doing anything anywhere else. Yeah. So for, for guys like Nemeth um, and other first timers that have come along the way, is there anything that you tell them specifically about how to prepare expectations, that type of thing? Or do they know when Josh Barnett calls and presents this opportunity, they kind of, they kind of know what's up. Like how, how does, how does that work? Cause obviously, as you mentioned, it's so much different. Those have seen it. It's so much different than a traditional pro wrestling match and, and what I think a lot of modern uh, fans might think. So how, how do you tell people or do you tell people to prepare, prepare or they kind of know at this point what it is since there's been nine of them before? I just basically tell them, you know, X, Y, Z or else. That's, yeah. that's my standard. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, uh, I, I do communicate with folks uh, to try and guide them into to how to prepare for this. I tell anybody that I can spar train um do live work uh because there is it's not about you, you can't prepare for this like you prepare for a standard professional wrestling match you need to be out there getting your eyes and your your getting your eyes and your body ready to take those strikes to be able to, to slip dodge if you want to counter them properly you need to be under the duress of getting hit and you have to sharpen up your ground game because we're not going to break you up. There are no ropes to save you. None of those things. And people are going to try and take you out and to, to try and make sure that they show up ready to go in shape uh, to protect themselves and give themselves the best chance of victory. So um, I do give a guiding hand, I would say, but ultimately I, I have to, I have to have trust in these wrestlers to be able to do what's needed out there in the ring. And, uh, you know, the thing with trust is you have it until you don't. So mm -hmm. someone goes out there and, um, isn't able to, to live up to the expectations, then you're probably never going to see him again. But it's also not like, <laughs> even if that was the case, I wouldn't love it, but I'm not going to necessarily be super mad at the person, especially if they did their best and, this isn't a place for everyone, but it's a place for anyone that's capable of being able to step up to the demands uh, of this ring. So someone that has uh, earned their way back, your opponent, uh, John Morrison, a.k.a. Johnny Bloodsport, and he's uh, been in the action before in Bloodsport. You guys have worked together. I believe you tra helped train him for his boxing debut. Do I have that right? Um, yes. Yes. And you've mentioned that he's... I, a, I was his head trainer for his boxing head, debut. Head tra okay, very good. So <laughs> I his, trained him for it and uh, cornered him and, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, what... I, I think you've mentioned before that you know, he has that. Um, obviously, he's super athletic. He, I believe you said he has an amateur wrestling background, if I remember right. He does. He, he wrestled in college. Yeah. So, I mean, is what made him... Because you've, you've uh, competed against a, a myriad of opponents uh, throughout the years in doing this. What made him attractive to you uh, this time out to to go up uh, heads up? Uh, his luscious locks. Yes, his of course. Ever, ever tanned body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for John, it's it's actually really easy because <clears throat> he's done every kind of match you can think of. Just about he's got massive international experience. Uh, he is strong as all get out. A great wrestler very quick, very incredibly agile, especially at his size. And he's undefeated in blood sport. So to me, you know, that's a challenge worth putting in front of yourself. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't look at someone like John and think, uh, whether I've trained him or I've not, that there's any ability to take him lightly because at the end of the day, he wants to win. And regardless of me training him in the past or training him in the future, he wants to be able to say yeah but remember that time we went at it mm -hmm. yeah exactly 
Um, you find yourself going in this fight in a very unique position because you're coming off your first blood sport loss to uh-huh. uh, Timothy, Th- Timothy Thatcher. Last time out, Timothy Thatcher, an outstanding wrestler. I got to see him in person uh, for the first time last May, I think. And it's uh, it's an experience. He is that intensity is just, and you know, you've been in the been ring with him off the charts. Uh, yeah. you have some, you assume you have some redemption on your mind going into this uh, coming off a loss. Yeah, it's uh, it's never any fun to be on the uh, the receiving end of a submission. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I can take some pride in being one of Tim's coaches. But um, I guess there's probably that trope that uh, when the student can overtake the master, you know, that's quite quite the milestone. And uh, he's just showing that he's been putting in all the work that he's learned as much as I've been able to give him and then some. Um, so a part of me is uh, you know, quite proud for him. Another part of me is, uh, mad as hell and want to want to beat the crap out of them in in uh in retribution but y- if you're afraid of losing or if winning is the only uh the only the only thing that you can you can handle then you shouldn't be getting into the ring in the first place yeah. uh but uh yeah i'd like to get back into the win column and I didn't make it any easier for myself to do that, but uh, but that's the nature of, of blood sport. This isn't yeah. about uh, setting people up with gimmies or anything like that. This is about putting together an event filled full of the most uh, vicious, uh, uh, sh- the strongest, most vicious, the most dedicated, the the guys with the great guys and cows with the greatest will to win and overcome any challenge in front of them. And uh, to lay it all on the line in the most raw place in professional wrestling. So to do that, I I am like no other. I have to be able to live by that kind of motto and and deliver. So yeah. I had to had to be somebody like like John Morrison. Yeah, we'll see what happens next Thursday, of course. And someone had got a lot of headlines for being on the show, of course, Shayna Baszler uh, in WWE. And you did you talked extensively about this in your interview you did with Phil Strum on Under the Ring last week. So I don't want to repeat the same questions there. It's good, really good interview, insightful. So I suggest people check that out. Um, one thing you did say is, uh, you know, kind of being able to pull this off that you mentioned my relationship with people there being, I assume there being in WWE and, but you would never, uh, to my knowledge, you've never worked in WWE before. And no. so how, so how do the, from the outside, how those relationships build? Since, you know, how, how does that, how does that work? Uh, well, um, I have met people along the way in various, uh, various settings, uh, prior, long prior before, uh, the WWE and UFC were under the same umbrella, but, uh, also it just comes from being, a part of this business for as long as I have combat sports, pro wrestling, MMA, all that. And I've had numerous athletes that I have trained in WWE before. And through them, I've, uh, come into contact with, uh, with office, with the office and other people and other wrestlers. And then having blood sport as being this professional wrestling vehicle of mine brought interest from people from WWE as well scouts as well as just wrestlers and other people just wanted to see it and from there you know those relationships flourish especially if you you tend to them the right way um and then of course it doesn't hurt that uh you know i'm shana baszler's head coach and yeah. manager so <laughs> that also puts me in contact yeah. with folks but ultimately uh you know that th- they'd have to sp- they'd have to speak for themselves while they want to work with a guy like me but for me uh <clears throat> I'm just out here building the best things I can, the best way I know how, and being a person whose whose word is dependable, and who's somebody that can be trusted upon to to do the best job for not just the show but for whoever he works with, and uh, you know I've I've earned enough trust uh, to be able to to have people like Shanna Baszler who's under contract come and work, work this show and be a part of this experience. And I never intended blood sport to be anything, but a neutral ring where anybody from anywhere could be a part of this is, and if it all works out for people and we can all get on the same page, then let's go. If there's something that, 
you know, it doesn't sit right with them or they don't feel comfortable or what have you, or maybe it's just not something that's affordable for us, then that's okay too. Uh, nobody owes us anything. Uh, at least not until like we sit down and we make, we come to an agreement then, you know, okay, we gave our word on something, let's move forward. But just in general, I, I just want to work with people that want to work with me, that believe in what we do and that have passion. There's a lot of people that would love to do stuff with and in the blood sport ring, but beyond the fact that there's not everybody is capable of doing this and that's not to take a dig at anybody or to, um, to be arrogant or egotistical, but it is a factor of reality. Not everybody can do this. Uh, not everybody is cut out to be in blood sport and, and that's okay. You know, that's, that's fine. But also uh, there's a lot of people that probably like to use it for their own advantages without understanding or really any real consideration towards what we're trying to create here. And this wouldn't be a place for them either. Uh, this isn't something to just elevate me or the show. It's not just, uh, it's a place that has to be driven by passion or it won't work. Yeah. Did the uh, process to get her start a long time ago? Did it take a long time to, to figure out? It didn't take a long time, thankfully. That's good. Good. Was Masha Slamovich always the primary choice to uh, to face her? Obviously, she is a uh, outstanding no. <laughs> wrestler and in, in, in just, in, in, I mean, just up and to the right, as tough as they come. Uh, so when people saw this, they're like, wow, I can't wait to see it. So yeah, she, you, you, you know, there, so there wasn't necessarily the, the, the main no. choice. Yeah. No, uh, because, uh, she was already set to be a part of that women's, uh, four women, one night tournament. And right. then, you know, this came across the plate and she demanded the opportunity to wrestle Shayna, um, over the opportunity to potentially win that four woman tournament. So, uh, we, agreed to her request and uh we made that matchup nice. um and we knew that we could find a suitable replacement i mean not to say that you can replace masha slamovich because i don't think you can but uh i think janai kai is a, is a great um a great person and a great wrestler to step up into that slot and has only been getting better and better and better um since her her prior blood sport um uh appearances and is not somebody to take likely it lightly in, in any fashion so i expect big things out of her um i watched her recently at kitsune uh take on uh sayaka unagi for the kitsune title it was a hotly fought match so uh you know janai kai is working and wrestling and fighting at the at the at the highest levels right now so she's she's ready to go to go for something like this uh this woman's one night tournament yeah should be good. Uh, is the card complete at this point or any other new uh, new fights to be announced over the next week? It's complete um, at the moment, but it's wrestling. So I don't know, man. Somebody <laughs> could roll their, roll their ankle, yeah. get staph infection. I, I, I don't know. So yeah. I'd say always pay attention because, hey, man, if you're a fan of wrestling, then you know how wild and wooly this stuff can be. Mm -hmm. So keep, keep up to date with all of our social media and all that uh, just to be – on the cusp of when, when, when things change, because when they change, they change quickly. Just like, uh, you know, Shayna becomes available to be a part of this show. Like, okay. Okay. Then all of a sudden it's like, bang, I want her. I want her. I want her. Well, okay. Well, yeah. Okay. Masha, I, I, I see that conviction. We'll do it. Uh, and all of a sudden, boom, things are changing. And then yeah. it's like, well, who's going to replace Masha? So you get moving, you get the wheels going. Uh, you can't slow down, especially as, you know, the event's coming just around the corner uh, mm -hmm. next week, uh, Thursday at uh, 4 p.m. Eastern out of uh, Penn's Landing Caterers in Philadelphia. That's right. One of the reasons I ask is because uh, there was a report out there to, that uh, expect multiple WWE talents there. So I didn't know if there was something new to come. And yeah, I like I know you like to keep some of the secrecy up. So I didn't know if there was anything else to expect there. Well, I, I, I there were some other names uh, that we had discussed with uh wwe but um at at, at the moment it's just shana mm -hmm. and to be honest you know shana's shana does the work of a hundred if you ask me yeah i get you i get you i want to talk also about uh blood sport bushido coming up this june uh, in tokyo japan obviously a lot of time between now and then and in some cases not a lot of time um when did you first have your your eye on putting on this event in tokyo um 
very beginning. Sorry to turn the AC on in the car. It <laughs> is hot. Um, it was always something I wanted to do. Like an absolute dream of mine to bring a show to Japan um, and give back to that community and put something on the mark uh, that that I feel really represent who I am and, and the people that have invested in me. And it's the place that made me, drove me and inspired me and, and fighting and MMA and is really a linchpin in the wrestler and person in so many ways of who Josh Barnett is and who the war master is. So this is a dream come true. And, and honestly, um, I sat, I sat down with uh, Akira Maeda and we were talking about it and I said to him, I go, has a foreigner, like a, a straight up gaijin, come to Japan as an individual, started a company and put together a show like this at some place like Yogoku? And everybody kind of sat around and went, I don't think so. I don't think this has ever happened. And I, I, you know, I could easily be wrong. There's been a lot that's happened um, uh, from the seventies on up, especially if we're thinking about modern pro wrestling where this could have been a thing, but to my knowledge, to Maeda san's knowledge and everybody we've asked, it's like, it doesn't seem like this has ever been the case. So like, okay, well, I'll be the first. And the only thing I can say is that again, it's, by creating the relationships that I have over the years that, that allows me to do this, that gives me this opportunity. And with that, I'm going to take that same philosophy that I have for blood sport here in the States and bring that to Japan. It's not just about the matches. It's about creating a place as wrestler first, a neutral territory where anybody can be there and uh, where it's, it's just about stripping wrestling down to its rawest factors and letting that shine and let that aspect of combat and overcoming and adversity hook the people in the heart and bring the emotions out. It's not yeah. just about watching and, uh, and cheering and, and getting in the hashtags. It's got nothing to do with that. It's got all about leaving you with that moment that you want to tell the world about. Yeah. I was curious, you know, so you would know this better than anyone. Will the, Will there be any difference in the presentation or how you have to put on the show, given it's a different country, a different culture and so on? Or do you feel like kind of what you've built here with Bloodsport, it's basically kind of lift, almost like lift and shift in, in a way, if that makes sense? Uh, yes, there is going to be some localization because it just can't be helped. But at the same time, if what they wanted was a straight up Japanese promotion, then they would be better served by just a complete Japanese team creating that. But mm. Bloodsport needs to retain its core identity. And yes, it is a, um, it, technically it's a, it's a foreign show. It is a show from America, but I want to incorporate the best bits of what makes us, us from the American side and from me specifically as an American, um, uh, in, integrated with the aspects of what makes Japanese pro wrestling and Japanese culture and Budo so invigorating and inspiring. So the, the idea is to try and combine these sort of things uh, into something that stands alone. And that's also important is that it doesn't come off as anything else other than itself and something that can only be gotten from blood sport, whether you're watching it, uh, in Japan or you're tuning in to watch it on, on fight TV. And that's not the easiest thing to always do, but that is one of the core principles that, that we're trying to approach with this show. And, uh, I know I had, I've had people constantly reference the UWF in regards to this show. And mm -hmm. I understand that, but you know, I, at this press conference that I did in, on Valentine's day over in Japan to announce mm -hmm. the show, I had to tell, I told a reporter, I go, but this isn't the UWF and this isn't going to be like the UWF because that was a different time and a different place with different wrestlers for the most part. We cannot go back and recreate which was. We can only create what we can now. 
And this show is not trying to be, be the UWF or any of its offshoots. It's trying to be its own thing. Uh, it is guided in a lot of ways by the spirit of what the UWF was and by the people behind the UWF and behind New Japan Pro Wrestling. But um, we're not trying to be anything but ourselves. And I think in this case, if you were trying to copy uh, something that what was, that would be the quickest way to create a failure because you'd yeah. never live up to it. That makes sense. And these names, I mean, you got yourself, Minoru Suzuki, Rampage Jackson, David Boy Smith Jr., Sakuraba, Michael Hearn, Fernaki, and the, I, I've been working on this pronunciation all day. David Mozamanashvili, did I get that? Mozamanashvili. Yeah. There we go. Do it better than I can. Already, that's a a killer lineup, and I know there's more to come. That's a that that I mean that that's like incredibly impressive, and uh, I, I'm sure the fact that it is happening in Japan made this an easy call for a lot of people to participate, and also future people to sign on the dotted line. Well, by being in Japan, it gave me access, access, easier access to Japanese talent. So, of course, I want to make advantage of that or take advantage of that, I should say. Uh, but I want to bring in foreign talent that I think is going to be the right match for the ring and also is going to make the biggest impact as possible. Um, you know, like, and in a way, my some of my my booking and matchmaking thoughts are like Antonio Inoki and Akira Maeda, where these guys would find this talent all over the world. Like uh, Maeda finding Volkan mm -hmm. and Dick Bry and Peter Ertz originally, and even uh, uh, um, Vitaly Klitschko. And he, he, there is a huge laundry list. Uh, Fyodor Emelianenko, Misha Luikin. These guys were all incredible. Chris, Chris Dolman and Chris Haseman and on and on and on and on in addition to the japanese talent that he had and enoki finding all these guys for these uh chuck wepner and willie williams and um oh god why am i blanking on the guy's name but uh, uh an olympic medalist in judo that he brought over for all these different style fights and then at some point uh, you had uh uh the russians coming over like victor zangiev and Salma hashimikov whoever would have expected that so being somebody trying to learn from the well i would say the genius of those guys and having the developing the eye to find the talent for the shows and that's a skill and i think i think i'm doing okay with it but we won't yeah. know until we see it all right <laughs> exactly so yeah, we'll talk more about that in the future blessed for bushido coming up in june in tokyo available on triller and uh, all that good stuff so a lot to come there uh, a couple other questions before we get you out of here Major AEW debut in Seattle at Wrestle Dream, an event designed to honor the late Antonio Inoki. How did that? Uh, how did you get on that show? Is it just the the association with Inoki you've had, or when did those conversations start? Obviously, Washington is your you know, your home state, and Seattle is your your hometown. How did uh, how did you get on that show? All of those things combined. Yeah, uh, I basically just reached out and said, "Yo, you're going to do an Inoki tribute show or a show with a, a theme of of a, a tribute to Antonio Inoki." my mentor <laughs> and one of my mentors in professional wrestling, the guy who got me in the business uh, in my hometown. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? You know, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I am the, the most Enoki guy yeah. in the United States. Uh, so if I'm not on this show, it doesn't really make any sense. Mm. And they're like, Oh, good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh and uh you know there was a lot of plans on on what how that could have turned out but ultimately um i'm really glad that i got to have a, an opportunity to get in the ring with uh with claudio Castagnoli yeah. Yeah. and yeah have a good time it was great yeah. i watched the match again today i watched the whole the whole presentation of it today and uh yeah what a fun like unique match and again you know unique is kind of the the thing that comes in the blood sport and all that it was just a it was just, it was a really just entertaining, what, eight, nine minute match. If, if it was that, like that yeah. yeah. And it felt, it felt like a fight. It felt like a legit, I mean, there wasn't any top rope stuff that what it would, but it was supremely entertaining and people were into it. And, uh, Claudio got the win and, uh, you know, I was listening, you know, on commentary and, uh, Moxley, John Moxley was talking about training with you and boxing in the, in your backyard, in your garage, mm -hmm. in the driveway, and just that visual. It's like, you can kind of 
you can kind of see it just all this craziness going on at, uh, at your place of the uh, John, training John Moxley. Uh, yes, there's in, in a sense, um, not only have I been inspired by, by Carl in terms of technique, uh, wrestling skill sets and, uh, and approach, but also I, I've, I've created my various own little backyard torture, <laughs> torture gardens, uh, just like Carl had in Florida. And, you know, maybe someday there'll be video and pictures of, of me and Mox and various other wrestlers that I've worked with over the years. And, uh, you know, as a, as a, as a remembrance of this, of these times, just like you can go and find the old photos of like Funaki and, uh, Suzuki out there training with Carl and, and other guys like that. So, uh, I, I keep that tradition alive, so to speak. But, uh, it was interesting. Mox also, he came and told me afterward, he goes, you know, it's really interesting to see the difference between Claudio in the ring in general and to look at him in the ring with you. Yeah, it was. Yeah. He actually looks like, Oh, he's normally smooth as smooth as Swiss butter, man. High fat, high culture, just rolling mm -hmm. through it. Just, just the creamiest stuff. But, uh, he said, no, he looked, he actually goes, Claudio looked tense. He actually looked nervous for once. Interesting. And huh. like, okay, maybe there's a little bit more, uh, out here that I that I'm unfamiliar with, and and I'm glad to bring that to him because ultimately the whole the endeavor there was to level him up. Now he's a part of Black Blackpool Combat Club. He's under um, the auspices of Mox with that group, and I wanted to see if I could help him find another gear, get to the next level, and and he rose to the challenge without any issue. Um, full full confidence in Claudio would work against him any day of the week and would have him on my side any day of the week. Mm -hmm. uh, so really a, a, a fantastic opportunity for, for the both of us. Uh, but uh, yeah, would like to see it again. Would like yeah. to uh, maybe ratchet it up another notch. See yeah. how it goes. Yeah. You, you guys mentioned that in the, uh, the post-match promo and uh, I'm saying blood sport might be a good opportunity for that. Who knows down the road? You never know. It's possible. You it's also know. kind of funny because, uh, I did catch uh, someone sent me the clip of uh, of Cornette talking about it on one of his shows. Okay, and, he, and it was, uh, and I'm like, is he gonna is he gonna hate it? Is he gonna you know <laughs> what do you know? I mean, he's yeah, a yeah. promo machine, so whatever he's gonna say, he usually wants to say something that is gonna create a reaction, good or bad. Um, mm -hmm. But he goes, man, how strange to see this on this card. <laughs> you got all this wild stuff, and then all of a sudden, bam! This is incredibly serious straight to it grappling match just breaks out in the middle of this card full of all kinds of craziness. And I go, yeah. well, you know what? He's kind of got a point, but mm -hmm. ultimately um, it's not about trying to adapt to what everybody else does. It, the, the, the point really is to think about it. Like you got to go out there and, and stick to your guns and stick to what your strengths are and stick to who you are. As soon as you get away from that, as soon as you start trying to, to really like, blend in with what everybody else does try to follow in their footsteps or overtake them in the same way you, you get lost in the shuffle and you just become another cog in the machine versus who are you as a wrestler are you just the same guy but you have a few different moves or are you a are you as a wrestler somebody that has a very different approach has their own strategies has their own techniques their own ways towards achieving their victory that is specific to them how do you stand out and that's really the way I saw it. And yeah, he's right. It was a very different match amongst all the different matches on yep. those cards. Uh, even if you weigh them from single match to single match. Although I'd say me and Claudio were far more like, let's say, Brian <clears throat> and Zack Sabre Jr. than anything else uh, at that event. But that's great. Wrestling shouldn't all look the same. And yeah. I wouldn't expect every wrestler to have the same approach. And uh, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't change it for a thing. And I'm never going to be any different than, than what I am. And I wouldn't matter, imagine Claudio would be either. But it also goes to show that you got to adapt to your opponent, too. Uh, yeah. if, if you've got one, one way of achieving victory, but this person is the absolute antithesis towards, towards getting there, why would you try and push against that uh, uh, push against that wall instead of go find the door and open that. Yeah. The wrestling cards at their best are a buffet of different things. Cause if you have the sure. your point, if you had the one thing, 
you need those palate cleanses, you need those changes. And, and that was definitely what that was for sure. Speaking of palate cleansing, I want, I, I, I'm going to get you out of here on this bourbon. I love bourbon and I'm very excited to hear. Of course, you've uh, started this, uh, this bourbon line uh, with this uh, distillery out in California, Warbringer Bourbon, and your, uh, your first round sold out. You have a, another round right now, limited edition. And I was reading up on it over the past couple of days and uh, it's unique. How did you get into this uh, this space? Because you're not just putting your name on it. You're putting your hands on barrels. Like you're getting in the mix. I'm, I'm fascinated by this. <clears throat> I've been a connoisseur of whiskey for quite some time. And I was actually having some discussions with various distilleries about getting into the whiskey business. Um, I didn't have any interest to do any like white labeling where somebody else is going to pick it all for me. And then I run around acting like I got this whiskey and I didn't have any interest to do something where it was all set out already for me. I wanted it to be something that I knew that would be worthy of having my name on it and could live up to whatever it was that I felt a whiskey that was representing me should be. Um, serendipitously Sespe Creek we reached out to me about doing something and I thought okay well let's get together let's uh let's meet each other let's uh, I gotta try the product and see where we go from there and it just blossomed into what we have now and um, I've done everything in the distillery from doing the distillation to cleaning the floors and everything in between so uh, I, I do stand behind what we make and how it's made and I know the process. So when it came to adding something to the lineup, it was a really rather easy. It's just like, all right, I'm going to go to the barrels, start, start sampling and picking and seeing what, what we have on tap. And from there, let my, uh, my nose and my palate go to work and I'll make something that I think is worthy of having the name on it and being put out there into the world. That doesn't mean that everybody's going to love it, uh, but I stand behind it, and I think I made something uh, pretty badass. And yeah. now we've got this cast strength blend to add to the lineup, in addition to the single barrel edition, which I'm always looking for for new single barrels to put out there as the standard Warmaster edition and our standard 98 proof blend. Yeah, and mesquite. That's a um, it's a unique a unique ingredient flavor style and. Uh, mm -hmm. You wouldn't have any other way. Bold, intense. I've I've seen it described as, and yeah, it's uh, I mean, it's it's a risk because you know there's so many different bourbons out there, and uh, but it's good, just like we're talking about wrestling, right? There's you have you, if everything tastes the same, nothing really tastes any different. But you have something like this, which has a little bit of um, a little bit of a different taste, and, and kind of was reading some of the descriptions and, and on the website and everything. It's uh, it's good because someone grabs a bottle like, oh, I haven't had this in a while. It may not be in everyday bourbon, but it could be something that when you have it, you're, you're in it. You know what I mean? Well, everybody has a different palate and yeah. there's plenty of people out there that they hate smoke in their spirits. So uh, I often say, look, if you like peated scotch, if you like mezcal, uh, you'll, you'll love this. Uh, if you've never drank anything smoky, give it a try anyways, because it's, it's different. Uh, it is potent. I'll say that much. <laughs> uh, but it's flavorful. It's deep, and it, and it's uh, you can use that ninety-eight proof blend for making killer old fashions, Manhattans that now all this have a smoky element to it. Uh, drinking it on ice, if you want, makes it smokier. In fact, um, or even if you add a little bit of water to it, it'll bring all that the oils up to the surface and release even more smoke. You can also, you want it to simmer down a little bit, pour it in a nice wide mouth glass or even a Glencairn. And just let it sit for five to ten minutes, and the nose will take on totally different, um, more subtle, more voluptuous um, uh, sense and mm -hmm. taste, and it'll it'll affect the, uh, the the palate a little bit as well. Just letting it, giving it some air to breathe. Um, but ultimately, it's it's big, it's bold, it's uh, you know it uh, it lets you know it's there. And you, it, you can't deny it. So I love it for that, for that aspect. And, uh, I know that, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's not going to taste like anybody else's stuff out there, yeah. but you know, being that unique means that some people will be like, Oh, 
this isn't for me. Totally yeah. fine. I'll go back to drinking something else, uh, but enjoy whatever it is that you're going to drink. So you can get that at warbringerbourbon.com. Um, of course, if uh, you're, I, I'm, I'm looking, it's nationally distributed, but people can actually order it now and get it, it uh, shipped out to them. I was looking at that today. So yeah, definitely look forward to, uh, to checking it out. And I was excited to see that uh, you did the very smart thing of making using the barrels and making beer or putting beer in the barrels to get that flavor, black blood of the earth. I saw you had this the other day. Uh, barley wine barrel aged um, in the ex Warbringer bourbon barrels. So you made that with a friend of yours, and uh, it's being distributed in about I think it's like about ten places out in California. Mm -hmm. And so, and that uh, that sounds incredible. Bourbon barrel, I mean, like stouts and and pour stouts, especially um, especially get a little bit more of that high alcohol content. It's a uh, it's a treat, man. It's really good. So I'm, I was excited to see that. Well, it needed to be something of a high enough ABV. A ABV to be able to barrel age it in the first place. Yeah. Uh, and for me, I just thought, well, let's just go barley wine. Let's not even screw around anywhere in between there. Let's, let's go, let's go high on the ABV. Let's make <laughs> something that's, that's uh, really going to let you know it's there. Yep. And you take the fact that these barrels are going to impart it with um, all the little elements of what's left in that wood from Warbringer. And that's going to be smoke. It's going to be sherry. That's going to be, uh, buttery uh some some menthol from the rye that's in the mash bill the sweetness of the corn all these things and they're going to mix with this with barley wine uh base that we use which is a, a very voluptuous in its own right um and in fact this this barley wine is great to drink straight um it is deep and very dark and flavorful um some folks might be like it's a one and done for them like it's just that it's intense and that's enough uh others I've seen them drink can after can, although not too many because you get totally <laughs> plowed. Uh, and personally, yeah. I think it would even be well to use it in a milkshake or over ice cream. And you could even think of it as like a dessert because there's a lot of uh, chocolate, cherry, um, you know, dessert type notes in this thing too. Sure. Interesting. Stuff. 11 and a half percent though. That's, that's good. That's a, that's a, that's a good, uh, yeah, you're right. Not, not too many of them, but yeah, you want to make it, uh, make it matter. So that's great stuff. Uh, we'll get you on. There's two other quick questions. Do you still do shower burgers? <laughs> oh yeah. I'm not, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's gotta be a good one though. I don't, don't, don't hand me some desiccated, uh, unjuicy burger. That's got no, no toppings, no drizzlings. No, uh, -uh. I don't want anything to do with that. You better, better come with the real. So like four by fours, if we're talking in and out and things of that nature. Okay. Uh, got it. Great. You know, I'm always, I'm going to ever be on the constant hunt for the world's greatest cheeseburger. So nice. uh, shower burgers will always continue. Shower burgers pair perfectly with black blood, of the earth, I'm sure. Absolutely. And, and shower that... burger, shower beer. I'll do it. <laughs> and then finally, have you seen the new roadhouse movie yet? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I fell asleep maybe a third of the way into it. Uh, okay. could, could, didn't, could not recommend it. Um, don't think it should have been made. Uh, like, but then again, I'll, I'll, uh, put my biases out there. i don't find much of modern film to be worth a, worth a shit. And especially the constant barrage of remakes and reboots is idiotic and pointless. Um, if you wanted to extend upon the story or tell your own version of it, I think that would have been a much better yeah. decision. And I think Jake Joan Hall is an incredible actor. Uh, I think he's done some really wildly fantastic work that I've really enjoyed over the years, but this wasn't one of them mm -hmm. and I don't blame him. Um, I didn't even, I didn't even think I was awake long enough to see any of the Connor parts, but <laughs> you know, if people yeah. say that him being unhanged and look seemingly coke fueled as a character, as a character, I'm not making, I'm not casting any aspersions. Uh -huh. uh, I think that is totally fine to play a character like that. I, I mean, if you ever watched the original Roadhouse, which I don't know that most people have who are even watching this movie, there's nutty people in that whole thing. Hell, you got Sam Elliott and you got Terry Funk. Yeah, that's right. So it's hard to hard to surpass. Plus, people's throats being torn out, but uh, monster uh, trucks all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not against action movies for the sake of action movies. That they don't have to be deep and they don't have to be complex. But uh, I just felt like this was a misstep, and uh, you know, no hate, just smile, smile, fair critique.
There you go. All right. Of course, we had uh, Bloodsport 10 coming up, uh, Bloodsport X coming up this Thursday. Again, 4 p.m. Eastern on Triller TV, 799. Get you access to that and all the collective weekend stuff. Got Bloodsport Bushido coming up in June, Tokyo, Japan. Same deal. Warbringer Bourbon. If you're out in California, certain places, get Black Blood of the Earth, Shower Burgers, all that other stuff. Anything else to plug before we get you out of here? Um, well, uh, for a shower burger, uh, <laughs> when uh, when Grilla Mall opens back up in, in their new location in Long Beach, Ask them about getting a Warmaster burger. That's a limited edition that they put out from time to time and something that we sat down and created together. And I think it's pretty damn fantastic. Takes the best elements of, uh, of cheeseburgers, my Seattle, uh, uh, my, my Seattle heritage and LA puts them all into one in the Southwest, I should say. Yeah. Um, and just stick with, uh, my social media as well as the, the blood sport social media stuff. And, and, we're a part of the collective. So there's a ton of wrestling happening, WrestleMania week. And a ton of it is all coming from game changer wrestling. So whatever you're into, they got something for you. So keep in mind, uh, you know, when you're done with blood sport, if you're still hankering for something else, come to another show and as part of this collective. I would agree. Well, you're a man of many different tastes, literally. And uh, it's always good to catch up with you, Josh Barnett. Thanks so much. You're very welcome. Thanks for calling.